Today, we're out here at the Department of Fish and Wildlife, and I'm with small game biologist Cody Roden. Cody, just four short weeks ago, this whole field right here was on fire, wasn't it? Yeah, Chad, that's right. So four weeks ago, we kind of try to practice what we preach here at Fish and Wildlife. And so we preach habitat message here, native habitat, native plants, native animals. And part of that messaging has to do with manipulating the environment in a natural way, right? And the most natural way we as humans can possibly do that is with fire. So Kentucky is actually very much a fire landscape. So humans have been burning the state of Kentucky for the last 3,000 years or so. Most of the species we consider native and most of the species that we wish to conserve in the state can actually deal with prescribed fire. So when we start talking about a long time, we're talking way before Europeans came that, that the landscape has been burned. People from long time ago saw the benefits of fire. Yeah, definitely. So about 3,000 years ago, native people stopped roaming around in these bands and they started setting in one spot. And so if you imagine you're a native person 2,000 years ago and you're sitting down in one place in eastern Kentucky or central Kentucky and the grass is getting high, you know, there's a lot of ticks around, what tools do you have to manipulate the landscape around you? And fire was pretty much the only tool they had that could manipulate the landscape on a large scale and they used it a bunch. You're not using the tractors, you're not using the sprays and the chemicals, in which all those can be used effectively, yeah. but fire has a more lasting effect on the landscape and it's a positive effect. It's natural, right? Exactly, yeah. And all and those it's cheaper. Oh, it's way cheaper, yeah. And so the mechanical and chemical means that we utilize to uh, manipulate the habitat around us essentially it's just emulating prescribed fire. So we can see here, this was fescue many years ago, and then we planted it to native plants. And the only thing we've been doing to this every single year is been burning it for the last five or 10 years. And so it's a native practice for native plants. And again, it's very much a lot cheaper. As a biologist, you look at what we're standing in and go, okay, here's some potential for habitat, right? Yes, yes, as far as small game habitat, and essentially habitat for any species we seek to conserve in the state of Kentucky, you know, if they couldn't deal with fire, they wouldn't be here. Because again, native people burned for 3,000 years. That was long enough to shift the fauna and flora that exists in the state today towards fire tolerant species. So we're standing here, we're looking back, we can see bare dirt. And honestly, that bare dirt in a couple of months, we won't be able to see that. The plants will grow up and form a herbaceous canopy over the top. You'll still have that bare ground in there. So quail chicks can run around in it, baby rabbits can get around in it. And animals have that herbaceous cover so hawks and stuff can't see them, but they can run around in that habitat and move around and get bugs and other things like that. Butterflies, rabbits, birds. Oh, you name it, yeah. yeah. All of that wildlife is gonna prefer this over the beautiful landscape lawn, right? Yes, yeah, and honestly, if we can do it here, I think it can be done on a vast majority of our almost four million acres of open land in the state. We got here a while ago and we've walked in just a few feet of this and you already found a nest where a rabbit has raised its young. And this is yeah. four weeks ago, this was on fire. Exactly. So yeah. that rabbit has since then found that as a suitable location, put a nest in, raised young and they are off on the landscape literally right there right there and again you know four weeks ago this was all black it kind of looked like a moonscape and these plants they're fire adaptive they count on fire as a part of their life history and so they sprung right up for burning off that thatch all the trash above the ground you burn that off the new plants are ready to come up so jacob we just heard about all the benefits to burning your landscape here and this, obviously at the Department of Fish and Wildlife, so this is on state properties. Yeah. This is not just for state properties. This could be done on individual home farms as well, right? Oh yes, Chad, that's a great point. We burnt here on our property, and we also like to support private landowners uh, in getting this on their properties. Through the Private Lands Program, we have 17 biologists across the state that can help you set up a plan to get this done effectively and safely, and meet the wildlife goals that you are looking to meet. We work with the Kentucky Prescribed Fire Council to put on landowner courses to teach you how to do this safe and effectively, which allows you to come on fires with us and do learning burns. We support landowners to do this because at the end of the day, we have somewhere about 20 million acres of private land in the state of Kentucky that could use this as a management tool. And obviously we can't do all that. We need some help from private landowners to get that done. We're not telling people to go out in their backyard right now and throw some diesel out and set it on fire. There's steps that need to be taking place. Reach out to your private lands biologist with the Department of Fish and Wildlife yeah. and learn how you can get involved. 
So our goal is to train people. We have a process to get you to become a burn boss that allows you to burn within the state of Kentucky. And again, the whole goal of this is, is not to just send people out there and just do this. There is a safe and effective way to do these fires and we're here to help you and support you along that way. So where does a person start? I mean, if they're sitting at home in whatever county they may live in, in the state of Kentucky and they're like, I'm not sure, but this may benefit my property. Where do they start? So first off, they can either go to our website and go to find my private lands biologist, send in a request for a visit. They can come out and talk to you about it. And then we have a, uh, the Kentucky Prescribed Fire Council has a website. It's KentuckyFire.org. And you go on there and look at trainings and you can sign up for information on when those will be. We've got to see on this particular burn here how quickly it goes from black to green and beautiful. And that has to do with the time of year you do most of your burning, right? That's correct. A lot of the open land burns we do are in the late winter, early spring. And it times up perfect that it burns, the green up comes, and you get a flush of new growth. Now, depending on what your management goals are, we may say we want to burn at a different time of year to get different responses. Hey, you want to get ahead of the curve and you want to get your place looking good? Yep. Maybe go get trained up and set it on fire. Exactly. Well, thank you so much. Hopefully, yeah. many of the landowners take advantage of this because as an outdoor person and an outdoor enthusiast and animal lover, this is how it happens right it's here. It's a win. Yeah, yeah, it's a win.